Hey, y'all. I just came on here to tell y'all about the adventure I had for my, when I had my stroke. And, um, so yeah, let's get into it. Cause I'm going to bed when I get through with this here. But, uh, I haven't gone to the doctor for about, probably about seven months. And every time I would go, you know, they check all your vitals. He was telling me, girl, your blood pressure kind of high. So, you know, I said, okay, was it had to take medicine? He was like, well, no, nah, not really, but it'd be high. It's high. So I said, okay. So I went to the doctor about three to four times after that, and he told me the same thing. So I think it was that week before I had the stroke. And so I went to the doctor again because my legs hurt me because I have fibromyalgia. And uh, I was getting some meds for this. So I said, well, while I'm here, I said, I was going to let you check my blood pressure. You know, they been telling me, you know, if I need any medicine or whatever. So he checked again. He was like, well, no, nah, you don't really need no medicine now right now. So I have been going to work every day. And I worked at Walmart 11 years. And uh, they had started stressing me out too. But... It was mainly because the doctor wasn't doing his job. But anyway, um, that Friday night, it was in December 2020. Now, first of all, I had a brother's died May. Then turned around, I had a brother die May from cancer. Then turned around in November, my other brother died, and he had a massive heart attack. So then in December, the same year, I had a stroke. So anyway, um... I got. I went to bed that Friday night, and my head was kind of hurting a little bit. And uh, you know, I ain't thinking nothing of it. I took me a pain pill and went to bed like I used to do. You know, took me a shower and everything, and went to bed. So I got up that Saturday in the morning. Now I'm off on. Well, Saturday in the morning started my new week. So I used to work Saturday, but Sunday and Monday I had off. So on Saturdays, I, Saturdays I don't really get up too much thinking about my hair and my makeup like I would do through the week. So I know I straight up, but since it's always sad, I always just go without no makeup and nothing on my face. So during the time we were wearing masks. So when I got up that morning, I got me got up and took a shower. I ain't think nothing, but I really couldn't tell nothing was going on yet. All I know is when I got to call my coworker, I started. T- I was talking sort of funny, and I didn't know why. You know, I couldn't get my words right or whatever. It was, it was real bad. So anyway, we got, she told me, she said, you sound kind of fine. And I was like, yes, yeah. so I don't know what's wrong with me this morning. I said, girl, probably tired, because they my Friday. So anyway, well, we got on the work, and I always part from her because she still do a different thing in the store than I was doing. And the cap team, she went on cap team, she was in, st- in stocking. So anyway, make a long story short. I went on to work, got to got to know what MJ was. This is a girl that I really know, the real good friend of mine. And her name is MJ. And uh she was like, Well, you know, I well, when I was talking to her, she was like, Miss Karen, she said, You sound kind of funny this morning. I said, Girl, I don't know what's wrong with my voice. I said, I've been, I was doing that when I was talking to Loretta in the car. Mind mind you now, everybody wearing masks, so couldn't about tell nothing. So anyway, she said, hmm. Well, anyway, so I went on down the hall. I said, well, I'm a, I told her, I said, MJ, I'm finna go down the hall and go and go to work because, shit, I'm tired. This is my Friday, and I'm ready to be off. And she was like, I know that's right. So I went on down to the bakery and to the freezer, or bakery freezer down the hallway, and had started putting the patterns out and getting the freighting stuff out. So I noticed that my right hand wasn't as moving fast as, it, as I thought it was, you know what I'm saying? So... I was like, mm. I kept on nosing it, but I, I didn't think no stroke, nothing like that never came out of my mind. So it was almost time for us to get a break. So I started pushing the stuff back up in the freezer, but I noticed when I was out on the floor, my hand was doing the same thing because I had left from the bakery and went to the floor and came back to the freezer to see what all I really needed before I take all that stuff out on the floor. So uh, MJ, she came out the hall again where I was. She said, Miss Carolyn. She said, I ain't trying to scare you up or nothing like that. She said, but the same thing that you having now, what you going through with your voice, she said, my auntie was doing that. And she had had a stroke. So I was thinking like, no, I, I, I said, no, nah, because, you know, I always think a stroke, you know, what you does, hey, you can't think of nothing, all that different stuff like that. So that's why I really didn't think 
it was a stroke. And y'all forgive me if I'm not saying my words fully because ever since I had the stroke, I've been having problems with saying my words. So anyway, um, she said, she said, Miss Karen, she said, you know, you need to go to the doctor when you get off and go get yourself checked. She said, because I'm telling you, my auntie was doing the same thing. But I, I just, it just didn't dawn on me that I had no stroke. So I got kind of a little worried that she told me that, you know, when I go on to work, I really couldn't, my mind wasn't really focused on my work, but I was doing half doing, putting like that. That was the first time I ever half did my work. So anyway, it got time, close to time for us to go home. So when I got in the truck, well, after I left my I told MJ I was going to go home. I went out there and my husband was like, I on. So I guess out there and I tell my husband, come take me to the hospital because I think I done had a stroke. And he looked at me like, huh? I guess because I wasn't looking at it, but I was feeling it. So he said, you sure? I said, yeah. I said, just take me up here just to see. So we get him to the hospital. I get checked in. And they always ask you what you're here for. So I told the girl, I said, I want to be checked for a stroke. So, as I get to sign my papers and stuff, she had me to go sit down. So, about 10 minutes later, the nurse called me, went to the little room where she was in. And she was like, um, what brings you here? I said, well, I want to get checked for a stroke. And she was like, what makes you think you done had a stroke? I said, I don't know. I said, I just want to get checked for one. She said, well, I don't think you done had no stroke. She said, well, we're going to let the doctor look at you. Now, remind you, I forgot to tell y'all this part. I me being up in that freezer a whole lot because I have to go in that freezer every day that I'm working and be standing there sometime, I don't know how long, you know, trying to get all the boxes and stuff back like they were. And I had caught a rash around my mouth and I was constantly getting that rash around my mouth because when I go in the freezer, I don't have that, you know, that all that's not covered. So anyway, he said, well, she said, well, I'm going to, uh, she said, just go have a seat and then we'll call you one doctor and see you. So I know I sat out there out. And she was like, she said, they called my name when I went back to where the doctor was. And he finally came in the room and he was like, what's going on with you? I said, well, first I was just, I want you to give me something for this rash. I said, cause every time I uh, go in the freezer at work, I said, my mouth will start, you know, get this rash on it, it won't go away. So he's like, okay, I can give you something for that. And he said, stop there right now. So then I told him, I said, I want you to check me for a stroke. And he was like, a stroke? And he said, I don't think you done had no stroke. So I was like, I said, but I, I wanted to be checked for one. He said, no, I'm not going to check because I really don't understand think that you done had no stroke. He said, now, when you leave here and come, you feel it way different when you come back. I'm looking at him like, now, don't you think you need to go and check me for a stroke? I'm paying for it, so you might well go and do it. But they want to deal with me because they had all COVID patients up there. So... You guys, excuse me, I'm giving you some breaks. So, I went on back home. When I, I went to that bath, and I laid down, because I, I really wasn't kind of, I was kind of feeling like a little funny, but, like I said, I didn't know what it was. So, I laid on back, went to the shower, and laid down. But I cooked before I laid down, then I laid down. So, my husband, he worked at night. He worked from 10 at night to 7 in the morning. So, I went to bed, went to sleep. When I got up that Sunday morning, my hand was completely gone. Now, remind you, I told you it was like it was going to slow motion that Saturday. When I got up that Sunday, I couldn't do nothing with that hand. Um, we were going out to my mama's house, and it's about an hour and 30 some minutes from here. So, he was like, you, you feel like going out to your mama's house? I said, yeah. Y'all, I was so sleepy. Now, I know I had just woke up, and I never woke up and be up, 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 and I'd be that sleepy. But I had got so sleepy until I just slept all the way down there. When we got to Mama's house, I was telling her about it and everything, and it, she still did never say, well, you know, she, well, nobody thinking of stroke. So, and I know I just sleepy. So we, we was down there probably about like four or five hours and we had to come back home. We got too late on the highway. So we came on back and uh, 
I was feeling so funny. I started feeling real, real funny. So I was kind of scared to go to sleep, but now I went on there and laid down and went to sleep. We got up that Monday morning, okay? Remind you now, I told y'all I was sleepy, sleepy. We got up that Monday, I was worse. I was just, I, I, it, was, it was something different about the sleep. So anyway, me and my husband, we uh, we had to wash. And we had one to the larger man and everything. And I was telling him about how I was feeling and stuff, you know, and everything. He was like, I don't think you're going to have no stroke, though. I said, man, I hope not. So we just sitting there talking. So all of a sudden, I started feeling funny and funny. And I, was, I know I be having, see, I have anxiety. And sometimes the anxiety has you acting ways that ain't necessary because they don't be happening to you. But I don't know why. I just, I was just feeling funny. So, well, I know why, but I was just feeling funny. So we, we had washed clothes. I told my husband, I said, well, we don't need to dry no clothes. I said, we just need to go on and take it to the merchant I said, because hey, I'm starting to feel a little funny. So we got the clothes real fast, put them in the back and stuff, and me and my husband went on to the merchant room again, back to the same spot. So the black girl that checked me in, she was still there that day, but it was a different nurse on the side. So when I got in there, you know, I gave her my same thing, same procedure, you know, give her my, my insurance card and tell her what I'm here for. I said, I want to be checked for a stroke. She's like, she said, you was here Saturday for the same thing when he said it. I said, yeah. I said, but he kept on telling me the doctor whoever he was back there. I, could, I can't think of his name, but I can go get them records pulled up because I'm thinking about suing the ass on the, on the reader. And it ain't never too late to sue. But anyway, she said, well, okay. She said, well, go have a seat and I'm going to get you back in a minute. So the nurse called me about like 10 minutes. I had sent about 10 minutes. When I came in there, she said, well, ma'am, what are you here for today? I said, I wanted to be checked for a stroke. I said, because my hand had gone completely out. I said, you hear how I'm talking? I was talking funny. They get rid of funny. And she said, well, pull your mask down. And I put my mask down, and she told me to smile. And when I smiled, she said, you got the droop. She said, you got that droop. She said, what you're going to do is go back in there and have a seat. She said, now, I don't know how long it's going to take before they come and get you and take you back there for a cascade. She said, but they are going to come and get you. So I went out there and sit down, and I told the lady I wanted a wheelchair. I said, can I have a wheelchair? So they came out there and brought me a wheelchair. So I was sitting there to see how I was sleeping. I'm talking about just a good sleep. You hear me? I was just sleeping. So like four hours, we had sat out there, and uh, my husband woke me up. He said they had called me. So me and him went back there. No, I don't think he went back there when I got the cat scan. But anyway, I went back there and got the cat scan and came on back. Now, y'all, I am very claustrophobic. I mean, I have a bag. Real bag. And so, I've never been able to get a... I've never been able to get in a MRI machine. So, they told me, they said, you had to have a cat scan and an MRI. And y'all, I was so sleepy. I didn't care what they put me in. You know what I mean? I was sleepy. So, about four more hours, they came back and got me again, took me back there, and my husband was just had. And they gave me an MRI, and I was in there probably like a good 10 minutes. Y'all, I was so stupid, just, it wasn't done. I just kept, said, Lord, just let me, let me get this here MRI. I was just sleeping. So, then when they got the MRI, and came back out there, and that's when they called me about like two hours later to the little room, and told me I had had a stroke. And that it was it was coming from a vein in my neck. I guess it got thick as whatever. And by me going to the doctor all the months, asking him, do I need high blood pressure, high blood pressure medicine? And he telling me no, when he should have been putting me on it. He should have put me on the high blood pressure medicine, and he should have put me on cholesterol medicine because my cholesterol was high. So anyway, the day when she when in the front when she checked my uh, my blood pressure. It was like 180 over 100 something. It was high. It was high. I'm not lying. It was high. And, uh, yeah. He got back there, told me, see, yeah, you had a stroke. So, anyway, I got an MRI. Came on back to the front. Had to wait another four hours. Y'all, we made that that morning by 8 o'clock. It was about 8 o'clock that night before they got in, in a room. And they wasn't my room then. They was just back there where they keep you in until they put you in the room. But, anyway, I had to go back there. That's when they, um, Basically, they didn't do nothing to me. They started giving me uh, medicine and stuff for high blood pressure and stuff like that. But they didn't never give me no shots or nothing. And I was in the hospital. 
I stayed in the hospital for two days. The two days that I was in there, my whole right side was gone. The leg, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do nothing right there. I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't hold, I couldn't, I just couldn't do nothing. I ain't lying. I don't know what it had done, but it had took the whole right side of my body. It had affected the whole right side of my body. And so, when I was in the hospital two days, I said, I came home the third day because I had to take a COVID test and I had to wait till the guy back for me to go to rehab the fourth day. So, the test came back in Asia and then they took me to rehab. And I was in rehab for about two weeks and then now my hand, I'm sure show y'all. So, it makes the whole right side of my arm up. But, a few difference in my hand, I hope y'all can see that. Y'all can do that hand like that. I can't, as full as I can go. And when I was in the hospital, my hand was close like this here. Just like this here. And I was in the hospital them two weeks and they would give me like shock treatments and get them to y'all about the shock treatment. So she told me, she said, I want to try something on you. And, uh, you know, try to see your hand come back. So I'm getting at it. You know, thinking this gonna do what it's gonna do. She came in the room and she hooked all this stuff to the right side of my boy. It was on my arm. And like a big bit of a hand back there. She had a strap all across there. She said, when you can't, when it, if she's gonna turn this on and if it's too much for you, let me know. Y'all, when that girl turned that thing off, that thing was like electric shocking me. You know, I turned my stuff, I told her, I. I was cool because I knew I was in rehab and I didn't want them doing nothing to me that they ain't for me doing. But y'all, I started to slap that girl out. I'm not lying. I started to take her ass and throw her through the wall. Man, that thing felt like, I don't know what it did feel like. She it was hurting. I told her, don't put me on that thing no more. And I mean that. But like I said, my hand, when I came home from the hospital, from the rehab, it was like to see it. So one day, I think it probably like been like three months after the fact. I was sitting up in the house one day and I started kind of trying to, because I had been doing it forever in rehab, trying to make it move. And so I started noticing that it was kind of, you know, open up. Y'all got so happy because it was opening up a little bit, you know, more and more and more. And so eventually I got to the point where I could open it all the way up. But like, I really want y'all to see this. Let's see. I can do that. I'd make myself learn how to cut scissors. Cut with scissors. I don't really too much use that box colors like I used to because I was really, really, really on it, but I don't do that no more. So I, I kind of like, you know, the wing out that box because I don't want to get cut. But anyway, uh, that's for I can do my fingers and stuff. And that's why y'all always see it when I'm doing stuff. It be resting like this because I can't really hold it up too long without it getting tired. So I take it back down. Then I noticed, but let me tell y'all about when I was in rehab and I was walking. So, they basically had to teach me how to walk all over again. When I got, because I, I was in a wheelchair and I couldn't walk. That's why they didn't have me, you know, up walking stuff. But uh, once you get in, in, in uh, because like going, okay, let me tell y'all about my, how they do it at, work, at rehab. So, when we get up the next morning, I always have a thing go on the wall. What time they going to come get me for the first one? I had an hour in each one twice a day. So they would come give me like some time, 8 30, and I stand to 9 30. But I but I was doing like different stuff in the rehab, you know. And when I started to want to learn how to walk, I told a girl, I said, I want to get up and learn how to walk because I just can't do this here. I can't be pinned down this this like this is. So they got me in there and they started, I started to move my leg. I Y'all, I don't know how my leg was, but I couldn't stand up on or nothing. I couldn't do nothing. I mean, it just had a, just that look, that little while, it had affected the whole right side. But I thank God that it wasn't no worse than what it was, you know, and all that there. But I got to walking before I left rehab. I started walking, which I had a limp, but I still was walking. It took me about like three days or four days to get into the stand up and stuff again. But like I said, I, I, the two weeks I was there, 
I started walking again, but I, like I said, I was still limping. And I started walking again, and then I got my hand to open out that can. But like, my arm, um, you can tell the difference. See, like, when I do this arm um, like this here, it's had to come down. This one. You see, I do. You got the little, the little, I don't know what it is. But yeah, so, like I said, I thank God that it wasn't no worse than what it was. I didn't lose my mind or nothing like that behind it. I just, you know, and I, if not, and since I've been, like I said, I ain't never cried. Now, what I don't like, I cried one day. But I have never cried since that one day about my, because I was crying in rehab about my hand one day, because I want my hand to come back. But then I thought about it. I said, some people have strokes. They can't walk, nor, nor get up. Don't have their right mind and all that stuff. And since I did have all that, I was being very gracious. I, I know I appreciate God for not letting it be no worse than what it was. You know? And then I kept on trying to start to get myself to learn how to do certain things. Because my fingers and stuff won't move. Like, you can see this. So I might, it's not straight. It's, it's up. So, yeah, it's a... Sometimes it gets to me because I can't do stuff. I can, like, comb my hair. I can't comb my hair. When I get food, I have to eat my left side because I can't pick up nothing with my right hand. Um, it just be a lot of stuff. It was, you know, it's some things that I ain't able to do. Like, when I put my clothes on, when I get in the tub, I really need to wash myself when I get in the good. Now, I have to bathe with this one hand. Um, and then by me being... I was right-handed, so by the left hand being the only hand that I got, I can't do a lot with it, like writing and stuff, because I'm not left-handed. I'm tried, I'm tried, I'm tried, and that would not work. You know, well, but like I said, I thank God it ain't worse than what it was, and you know all that. And then I have some people saying, "Girl, if I had a head stroke, girl, look, let me tell y'all something. I ain't the one to keep down. Now I still might be limited to what I can do." But I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna move around. I don't care what I said. I'm gonna move around. So, yeah, that's pretty much all, all of it. But like I say, the only thing I ain't like about it because you know they wanted to go and see me that Saturday. And then I'm gonna tell y'all what, what the what the nurse told me when she found that had been in that Saturday for that stroke. She told me she said if they had a went on see you Saturday, your hand would have never went all the way out. So she said, it could, it could have stopped it. Yeah. But I, I had, I'm telling y'all how much, how much medicine. I take seven pills now. I was taking five at first. I had to take an ample triple A for to help me sleep. So now y'all back. But I had to take an ample triple A. I take an amlodipine, an aspirin. Blood thinner. And uh, I can't think of the name of the words, but it started with an H. I take them. <laughs> that's all I can tell y'all. I don't feel like going there getting no bottle. But that's all I can tell y'all. But yeah, I had to take five pills a day for the stroke. You know, and high blood pressure stuff. And then I had to take, I kind of found out. I'm tell y'all about this. I went to the doctor, doctor about like three months ago, maybe four now. I had this little stuff on my throat. I thought it was strepto. What it was, my glucose level was up to 500 or something. Yeah, so I'm a, so I'm a type 2 diabetic now. You know, I had to watch what I eat and stuff like that. But other than that, I get up, I make myself do stuff. I've always made myself get some stuff, and I wasn't gonna stop till I got my hand open. I might not can't do a lot with it, but I made sure that something was open. I was not gonna be, mm -mm. Mm -mm. and I signed up for my disability. It's been two years, and I ain't heard nothing yet. Now I've had a whole stroke, can't do whatever, and they still give me the run around by my disability. I worked at Walmart 11 years, 11 whole years. Or that hell hole. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much all, y'all, though. Um, like I said, I thank God for letting it be what it was. And it wasn't no worse. 
And I thank him every day, all day. So that's why I never I never felt sorry for myself. I don't want nobody else feeling sorry for me because I still can get up and walk. I can jump, I can jog. I just can't do stuff with this hand. I can't, like, comb my hair. It, it gets to my nerves so bad. Now, that do worry me a little bit because I can't comb my hair. So, I have to keep a wig on or something. Then I get braids. My hair so thin because I have I have a thyroid problem, too. So, and that's one of the pills I take a day. So, my thyroid be acting up and it be taking my hair. Well, I don't say taking my hair, but it breaks my hair off. So, yeah, that's probably pretty much it. I'm, I, I be, I'm 55. My birthday is in October 12th. And I was born in 1967. So I'm 55. I'll be 56 this year, Lord, let me see. And I said, for my 56th birthday, I'm throwing me a party. Yes, I am throwing me a party. Yep. I'm built that one hand, doing it all. <laughs> sure will. But anyway, you know, that's pretty much y'all. So we had to go through with the stroke. And all of you, I just want y'all to know that. And see that I'm limited to doing certain things and stuff like that. But yeah, so I'm gonna end this video and uh, I'm gonna go my butt to bed. And I'll see y'all in the next one. And I'm gonna come back and be talking to y'all like I like to say, because I want this to be part of my uh, my vlogging and stuff. I want to be telling story time and the truth when I say story time. Yeah. But anyway. I thank y'all for being patient. If you're watching this here, you're going to watch it. And if you don't want to watch it, don't look at it. But anyway, bye. <laughs>